Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the hands-on session on uh, Magnum. Uh, my name is Saulus. My name is Brian. Uh, we're from Ericsson. We're uh, working on Ericsson Cloud Manager. Uh, so uh, uh, we have some technical trickeries with this hands-on session because we have the two layers of virtualization in your VMs is going to be very slow. Uh, so we had to do certain things there. The current setup that you have is uh, tuned for, uh, for six gigabytes of memory usage on the VM. So if you have eight gigs on, on your laptop, it should work still. But uh, for those who have more memory, if you have like 16 gigs, uh, uh, I'll get to that later, I guess. We'll, we'll, we'll have to modify a few files there. So uh, be ready. It's going to be slow. And uh, we'll need to go fast in, on certain steps. And then uh, some of them will take like 15, 20 minutes to get some results. So during that, I'll go through the slides. Um, so quickly, what we're going to do is uh, you all guys have to get uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox installed. So I sent the uh, email to everybody uh, before to get ready for that. You can still install it now. Um, so you all got the uh, USB sticks and maybe downloaded the uh, Vagrant box. And uh, we're just going to go on and uh, spin off the VM from the Vagrant box. Uh, which has a dev stack in it. We're going to set up dev stack and uh, we're going to go on with the Magnum stuff. So, uh, before that, uh, uh, can you raise your hands who has used dev stack before? Okay. Uh, who has uh, used Docker? Okay, great. Who has tried Magnum? Okay, few. Okay, so uh, it's good, and it seems you're all more or less familiar with DevStack then, so we're not going to get there to detail. Uh, okay, so let's start uh, part one. Um, so uh, regarding the memory, now those who have like 16 gigs of RAM on your laptops, uh, go ahead and edit the uh, Vagrant file. Uh, that's the one that you copied in your folders. And uh, there's two things that you want to increase there. Uh, the one is the uh, VB memory. So now it's set to uh, 6,000. Uh, put that to uh, like 9,000 at least. And then uh, depending on how many cores you have on your VM, or on your laptop, sorry, uh, set that uh, to vCPUs. The, the thing, well, sorry. The thing is, though, um, if you don't have more than eight gigabytes of RAM, then do not increase the CPUs, even if you have yeah. a quad core, because it will consume more RAM, and you'll be in trouble. And if you've if you've already loaded the box with six, even though you have more, it's fine. It's just going to be a little bit slower. You don't have to destroy it and recreate it if you don't want to. Yeah, once, once you're done with that, uh, run, uh, just type Vagrant up inside, being inside that folder. And you just start up the VM. And once it's there, uh, Vagrant SSH will SSH into the, inside the VM for you. So we have a question. Um, yeah. If you've installed Vagrant and VirtualBox and you're in Windows, how do you actually run Vagrant? Uh, okay, yeah, the Windows. How many guys have Windows? Okay, did you get my email? No. Uh, uh, I'm not. I don't remember if it on in the session uh, description. I believe I put that uh, it's best to install Git. If you just can get Git client with it, you'll get the Git bash. Uh, with that git bash, you can do all the SSH and all that stuff. It will be the same as on Linux. Uh, so maybe Brian can uh, 
I direct them to, to how to install Git with Git yeah. bash. I mean, if you have something like Sigwin or any kind of, yeah, will it work from the, the DOS prompt? If it's in the path, perhaps? Uh, it will, but the, the SSH, you need SSH yeah. client. Yeah, you, Putty is a good thing to have or any other SSH client. If you have it in your path, you can just type Vagrant SSH and it will work. But if not, then you can use a separate client. Uh, so who has uh, VMs already running? OK, majority already. Good. Uh, so those who are inside the VM, uh, just go ahead, uh, CD into dev stack, and uh, run stack sh. This should take around uh, 10 minutes to bring up dev stack. Yeah, if, any, if anybody has problems, just raise your hand, I'll combine. Sorry? What did you want me to change on the bigger side? So you have uh, more it's memory, 16, right? Yeah. right? So you can increase this to 9,000. And yeah, that, that's, that's OK. So as soon as your um, VM is loaded, then Vagrant automatically no, no, mapped it. port oh, you had the 2222. To your host, so you can SSH to local Go host to Vagrant, port 2222. And the username and password is Vagrant, Vagrant. Yeah, so we had one person with uh, that didn't have VTX turned on in their BIOS. So if you don't have that, then you need to re uh, reboot your machine, turn on VTX in your BIOS, and then try again. I mean, so far we have them in Google Docs, but they're not shared where you can see them, I don't think. I'll, um, I'll show the link, actually. Oh, uh, I sh we should have put them on there. So uh, if you've just come recently, uh, what I said before is if you don't have the box downloaded, then don't try to download it now. We have those USB keys. I have some problems with the internet. I'll, uh, uh, so the, we have uh, all the instructions on the etherpad. I'm trying to bring up somehow the link, uh, but if you can just follow me, it's etherpad.openstack.org. 
and then, then uh, slash p slash magnum hands on one word dash lab. Sorry? Slash magnum hands on, one word, dash lab. I'm going to copy it on the slides. Here's the link to the instructions. They're all in one uh, page there. For me too. Can't open it. Well, okay, then uh, We'll just uh, follow the slides as they are. And uh, if you get that page open, it's fine. Otherwise, just try to follow the slides. Uh, yeah. Do you, have, do you still have a link to the Google Drive? The So um, Vagrant uses the API of VirtualBox, so you may or may not see the actual VM like you'd expect in VirtualBox, right. but that doesn't mean it's not running. Connection for you rather than using the wallet. You have a message on the web. Want to try Kafka? No, but uh, they say that it doesn't open Etherpad for them either. Uh, who has uh, DevStack already done? Okay. Okay, so. Hmm? Okay. I think it's. So it's kind of unfortunate that Etherpad decided to go down right now. He's going to copy all the instructions to a text file and put it on the Google share that we have. So if you want to go there, then. So uh, somebody says that Etherpad loaded now. So maybe it's working. 
If you could throw the link up there again. So um, everything we're going to do is going to be inside of the, the DevStack VM. So you don't need to be able to, um, other than the SSH, obviously, you don't need to be able to ping it or anything. But um, if you're connected to a VPN or something, then I would recommend unconnecting because uh, some of the stuff, like Kubernetes and stuff, needs to be able to contact the um, internet. And it's difficult with proxies and things like that. Uh, okay, so I put the the slides on uh, on the Google Drive, so you should reach them through the link that you got uh, had originally. My Etherpad still didn't load. But in the slides, there's everything that you need. Uh, if you want to go faster. Sorry? It's in the session description. Okay, I think I'm gonna continue now. All right, so uh, those who have DevStack running now, uh, just go on, run Magnum Setup SH, uh, which will uh, do some changes on, on the OpenStack, will uh, decrease the flavor size and, uh, and uh, register a core OS image that we're gonna use for the cluster. And it, uh, it will create a security key pair for you. I'll go layer uh, deeper into all the stuff that that's needed. Just want to make it faster now to get through the slow stuff. Um, so it's pointed out that the script magnum setup.sh is actually magnum dash setup. So okay. Sorry about that. So that uh, Magnum setup script should be pretty fast. Once you're done with that, uh, we need to make sure that the EMs that you're gonna launch inside OpenStack will have internet, internet connection. So uh, run, run this uh, IP tables command. Inside the VM, after Vagrant SSH. Yeah, you don't need to jump. I'll say if you need to jump somewhere else, just stay, stay there. Uh, then, uh, then we need to source OpenStack credentials. So we source OpenRC uh, admin admin. Then we had some uh, problems with DNS. Uh, so the best thing to do is check the DNS IP that you get in your etcresolve.conf. Just type that command, you'll see the IP in there. And um, take note of that one, we'll need that in the, in the next command. Sure. 
So uh, the next command will be uh, a very long one. Now, like I said, we're, we're running two layers of virtualization, and uh, you know, best approach was to have VirtualBox for all of you guys, but it doesn't support nested virtualization. So the second level, when you run it, it's fully automated, uh, emulated. Sorry, so it's uh, very slow. That's why it's taking so long. Uh, so it, it should uh, bring up uh, Bay in, in 20 minutes. And while it's, we'll be doing that, I'll go through the Magnum and Kubernetes and give you more of a background and context of what we just did. So once you have the IP, just go ahead and uh, uh, run this command. I guess it's best to just copy paste from console, it's a pretty long one. This will actually create a cluster uh, that so it's going to have a core OS as a, as a base, and uh, it will have a Kubernetes uh, cluster defined there. So it's going to be one master, one minion, uh, one node. And this is what we'll, this is kind of the main thing with the, with the Magnum to, to get those base automatically up and running. And in Magnum. It is called a bay. If you're still trying to find the slides, then you need to go to the, the summit, the list of talks, find our talk, and look at the description. And the link is in there. Oh, sorry, actually, I got a bit confused. The, the first, the, this big command, that's a bay model. That's just a definition of the bay. The, the one after that, that's where the bay will be spinned off. Sorry. Who has started creating a bay now? Okay. Anybody has problems creating a bay model? It's too long or no? I will explain that. Okay. I just want to go through that now fast because it will take a lot of time to create that. And then I'll go to Magnum and explain what, what you guys are doing now. Okay, that's uh, the last command. Uh, retype that because uh, there's some characters wrongly interpreted. Yeah, it's uh, we create another one. Is there anybody who hasn't gotten their box imported at least? Can I ask one more time to raise the hands who started the uh, model uh, bay creation? Okay, so it's fair now. Yeah, so I hope your uh, laptop fans are working well because it's gonna Go to 100% of CPU. So don't blame me if it dies there. Um, so I'm gonna go now. Yeah, everybody who who's still not there, uh, be sure that you have the slides from the Google Drive so you can follow. Because I need to switch the slides to some of the background stuff.
All right, so uh, this is a diagram of all the stack that you are building now up. Uh, so on the bottom, we have your laptops, we have vir VirtualBox hypervisor, we have Vagrant that you know, controls the VirtualBox to spin off your VM from the box. And, and then in your VM, we have Ubuntu running there, uh, and, uh, and DevStack, and DevStack spins off the OpenStack by a certain configuration. So like I mentioned, that's already the second layer of virtualization. So all the OpenStack VMs are already camo emulated only. And this is where the slowness comes from. So uh, you do have Magnum in there as, as a plugin in DevStack installed. Uh, so you use some of the commands of Magnum. And uh, what Magnum does is, uh, as in general, it, it uh, abstracts uh, communication with a Docker or a, a Docker orchestration, container orchestration engines uh, like Kubernetes. So in this session, we're just touching Kubernetes. It supports now uh, Swarm as well and uh, Mesos. Um, so uh, those uh, two VMs that you see, the Core S, VM Master, and VM Minion, those are VMs which has Kubernetes install, installed in them, which all that is done by Magnum. And uh, so once that is done, you have a cluster of Kubernetes, which can be expanded or you know, scaled up, a little scaled down. And, uh, and once you have that, this is where you actually start deploying your Kubernetes apps, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go through a little bit of uh, Magnum uh, and Kubernetes things. So Kubernetes is a open source platform for uh, container application deployment, scaling operations and stuff like that, or the orchestration. So th that's what in Magnum they call the orchest uh, container orchestration engines. Uh, so in case of OpenStack, it sits on your uh, uh, on, on the VMs spawned by OpenStack. Uh, it has certain concepts. Uh, one, one of the concepts is a pod. So a pod can be one or more containers that are, uh, that are co-located on one single host. Uh, so you define pods through YML files. We're gonna later use those to launch an example application. Uh, it also has the concept of service. Service is a, is a logical component that exposes certain services. So for example, if you have you know, a bunch of containers running there and only a few of them you want to, uh, or a few of them are certain service, like a database, for example. So you define a logical model, a database, saying we, what are the ports, which, which are the containers that uh, provide this service. And then uh, other containers can use this logical model to discover those services, so you don't need to hard code IPs and stuff like that. Uh, then they have a replication controller uh, concept that's uh, uh, it's basically, again, a service that uh, for it you can just say, I want these certain types of containers to be like five instances always. So it will make sure there's like X number of instances out there, and if containers dies or, or a node dies with a bunch of containers, it will uh, respawn them. So just make sure that your service is always running. Okay, so that's a quick intro into Kubernetes. Um, so now Magnum, like I said, uh, it's abstracting uh, different orchestration engines, uh, container orchestration engines. It started off with the Kubernetes. That's why we're doing Kubernetes today. Later Swarm was added and now Mesos is, is in there. Uh, so it, it, uh, it utilizes uh, Docker API and Kubernetes API. Uh, and uh, yeah, th th that's what they use for, for communicating with those 
orchestration engines. Uh, so uh, you're going to use a bunch of uh, Magnum commands later on. And uh, actually, I could go through these first. Uh, so uh, Magnum has also certain concepts. Most of them are taken from Kubernetes. Uh, so you can see here a service or application controller. It's the same thing, uh, just abstraction in, in Magnum service. But we also have model, bay, bay and bay models. So bay model you just created before. Uh, it just defines, uh, you know, definition of the cluster, like uh, which VM image to use. In our case, we're using CoreOS. You could see that in the command. Uh, you also say, like, what kind of flavor to use. So, uh, you know, how, many, how much RAM and then CPU it will have. Uh, you provide security keys, so it will be injected in all the VMs when it spawns them up, so you can uh, connect to them. Uh, and similar stuff. Uh, one of the important ones is also there that you, you tell which orchestration engine to use. So if we would be using Swarm, you would say use Swarm, and it will bring up a Swarm cluster. And then the bay is just uh, basically a, a cluster of nodes that can host uh, containers on them. Pod is the same thing as uh, in Kubernetes, so it's, again, uh, uh, actually when, when you're spawning a pod, you're just giving a path to the Kubernetes pod. Yeah, and the well, container, I guess you already know what that is. So internally, Magnum uses a bunch of OpenStack uh, services, uh, I guess, the most important one is, is heat. All these clusters are brought up by heat, so inside there are heat templates. And the way it goes today is that you can, uh, you can modify those templates, tune to whatever you want. Uh, um, but that, 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 that is the main thing there. Uh, and of course, uh, Keystone, Nova, Neutron for networking, Glance and Cinder. Okay, so uh, who has Bay created? Okay, you sure? <laughs> if you do, you have a very fast machine. It takes Is around it? 20 minutes nice. with, the, with that original setup, with the one CPU and the uh, so the way that you know is when the okay. the bay is complete rather than in progress. You have eight gig in total, or not right there. Okay. Did you source the? Yeah. Okay. I just got the question about uh, when, when uh, Bay is being created, what's actually happening. Uh, so uh, like I said, most all, all, that, all those things are defined in uh, heat templates. So uh, you know, it just automates for you spinning out the VMs, installing Kubernetes on them, doing all kinds of uh, plumbing you know, to, to get that cluster up and running. And later on, it saves all the metadata. So we'll go through. You'll see like what are the IP addresses of all the of the master of the nodes, so you can connect to them. Uh, and that's that's pretty much you it. You know, it's just automation of this cluster, bringing up the cluster. Um, how about Keystone user dashboard or something? Yes, the heat templates. Uh, they are all in inside uh, yeah, Magnum. User so. Uh, if you want to look at them, so they're under no slash fix. opt, dash was. slash so stack, thing. slash magnum, and I believe slash magnum and then templates. Yeah, 
this with Steven, this is not working. Can I get a copy? Do it on the same way. Give me IP. Oh, shit. That seems just unhappy. I mean, you know, all this stuff, yeah. too. It's like a. No, my, my devs. Yeah, so here's a Magnum CLI command example. So we went through big model create, big create. Then we're going to do Kubernetes service create, oh, sorry, COA service create, and uh, RC, that's a replication controller. Uh, we're going to do all that stuff. So after, after you get the bay running, hopefully, um, so these are a couple of commands to explore it. Uh, so bay list will give you a list of the bays that you have there. Uh, bay show and bay name will give you the, the details of the bay in which you will see the, the master and node IPs. Once you see those, you can uh, SSH into those VMs. Once you're in there, uh, you can, for example, type Docker PS, and uh, you'll see a list of uh, containers already running in there because uh, Kubernetes itself is containerized. So it's running from containers. Anybody else having problems?
Uh, if everybody, if anybody, uh, like accidentally ran two times bake creation or something like that, delete the one, the other one, because you're gonna run out of RAM and it, everything will fail. One thing to note is that even when the the bay is complete, when things look like they're complete, they may not actually be complete. So if you if it's behaving strangely, then give it a little bit more time because some of the Kubernetes stuff is still coming up. I don't know, I don't know if he said this, but um, the bay consists of two VMs. So in the Nova list, you should see two active VMs. In case you're wondering, uh, if you're running that on bare metal, there's no problems like that. <laughs> Great the cluster pretty fast, and uh, the containers are coming up very fast. There's just too much stuff we're trying to emulate now. If you're done with this part, don't rush too fast. Like Brian said, uh, you might get errors there because Kubernetes is not up yet. It's still bringing up. Um, another thing that we don't want you to get a bad impression of Magnum and all this, it's not normally this slow. So the reason it's so slow, like Salius was explaining, is because it's multiple levels of virtualization. If you, had, if you had a machine where you had the OpenStack installed directly and you did the same thing, it, even if you were still in one VM, it would still be much faster. But you know, in production normally you have separate compute hosts and it would be much, much, much faster.
uh, I left out one thing in the instructions. Uh, all this uh, Kubernetes client stuff, it's all in the app folder on the, on the home folder. You need to get out of the dev stack folder. Yeah, all, all the server scripts are here.
Okay, so uh, again, who has Bay running? Okay, growing. <laughs> okay, so we're slowly gonna proceed. Uh, so I just wanted to show here that once the Bay is running, uh, you can use Magnum com commands to deploy your uh, Kubernetes apps, but uh, you can also interface directly Kubernetes. So if you go to the app folder and uh, do ma Magnum uh, Bay show demo and catch the master address and then do the Kubernetes setup, uh, kube control setup with your master address, it will fix Kubernetes client for you. So the kube CTL, that's a Kubernetes client binary. And from that, you know, it will run commands towards the uh, Kubernetes controller inside the VMs. Hello, sir, I have a question. Hey, um, so the question is, do you always need to deploy these containers, these bays, into VMs, or can you do that on bare metal? Well, uh, I think Magnum is working on Ironic support, where you can uh, use Ironic to uh, you know, provision uh, bare metal hosts as a host uh, as, as a computes for OpenStack, but uh, I don't think that's uh, very mature yet, so it doesn't really work well. But it's definitely coming there, and uh, once that is there and working fine, then sure you can uh, provision bare metal machines there, and uh, and uh, the containers will be placed directly on bare metal. So uh, the, this part is just to, you know, sh show you more of the context, um, or you know what you can do. And uh, so we're gonna get to the last part, which is uh, deploying the cube app. So at this point, we have the Kubernetes cluster running, and uh, we have created a very stupid uh, cube app for you to, to see how, how it looks like. So at this point, it's, a, you know, it's much less of the Magnum, but more of the Kubernetes stuff. But we still use the Magnum commands to deploy it. Uh, so in the, in the app folder, you have these, uh, a bunch of YML files. Um, so the first command will deploy a master pod. The master pod is just this very tiny web server that uh, other worker containers will be posting to, and that web server shows a table of the, of the containers that posted to it and, and the timestamp. So this way we can see the, the kind of the cluster of your uh, application. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just an imaginative example. Of course, your real apps would be completely different, but it just shows how we can use Magnum to, uh, to deploy these Kubernetes applications and then to control them. Um, because we're limited with the resources, we're not gonna uh, do any scaling. Uh, creating another node will probably kill that VM, so, uh, but Magnum provides a scaling uh, functionality so you could scale up and down your pod. Now we have just one uh, node in it. You could just type a command and uh, update the, the node number. It will spawn another one. And then uh, Kubernetes uh, will take care of utilizing that for your Docker containers later on. So uh, like I said, the first command creates a master pod. It will take a while, around five minutes, to bring it up properly. And then uh, you can use two commands. You can use a Magnum command, pod show. It will show you the state of that pod until it gets to active. Or you can use directly kube control to also do the get pod, and you'll see your pod in there. Then the next command is uh, creating a service. So the service will expose this master as a service so that uh, the, the worker pod that we're going to a deploy will uh, will be able to discover that master, so we don't need to tell the 
the other pod, or like, like wh where's your master? So the service, like I said, it's a logical component. It will, it, it starts up fast, and uh, it takes care of all the port forwarding and plumbing on, on, the, on the cluster VMs, so that base uh, can access this. Yeah, there's a type typo on uh, on, on uh, Magnum COE service list. There's missing dash. I'm sure you'll get an error if you try to do that. So.
you didn't catch that. Uh, so I just got a question now, well, what's the application that we're running? So like I said, it's a very dummy application. It consists of the master and the worker. The master is a simple web server uh, which uh, accepts requests from the workers and just shows a, a table of those registered workers. So once we do the, all the port forwarding, we'll get to the web page and we'll see their uh, list of the workers registered in there. That, that's all it is. It just shows you know, how the service exposure works and uh, how, the, how the containers can discover the services and, and work together there. Um, this slide hmm? seems to be an old version. Like this slide is missing. Okay. From the shared ones. But also, like, uh, we updated that. I just downloaded them from, like, now. How do you go look at this thing? <laughs> really? I, you know, we updated the, it said node port. Right. It's like capital N.
Um, I'm going to answer a question that I keep getting. So when you're looking for the minion IP, it is, if you do a magnum bay dash show space demo, it will list the information for the bay. And you'll see a master addresses and a, word, and a node addresses or something. I forget what it is exactly. It's the second one. It's probably ends in 136. So this is the minion IP that you should use. Uh, so for, for those who got to the last part, uh, just to explain what's happening there, uh, while we're doing this port forwarding, uh, so when, when the cluster is running uh, and we expose the service, this our master web server is available there, but only within the cluster. And what I wanted to achieve with this is that you can open up a browser from your laptop. So we just need to add this additional plumbing, which uh, port forwards, we we'll already actually have in the background port forwarding from your laptop to the OpenStack VM. And then this one actually does a port forwarding from your OpenStack VM to the Kubernetes uh, cluster. So we need double mappings there. That's just because we're running in a, in a virtual box. Everybody happy? No? Who, who has got the browser thingy working? Wow, that's good. I didn't expect that.
and died at the last moment. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you know, this, this is, yeah. Do you contribute to... Uh, Any luck? Everybody as well. Uh, so the way Kubernetes works with the services is when we when we create a, a service, a Kubernetes service, and after that we create pods. All those pods get injected environmental variables, and there is a naming convention of them. So based on the name of the service that the, your pod is interested in, it can figure out the IP. So that's why our worker is just a bash script reads of environmental variable and keeps posting to that. Yeah, just env. If you SSH to the minion, type env, you'll see a lot of stuff in there. It's in the VM, in the, in the minion, in your node. So if you do nova list and uh, find your minion, just SSH core at that minion and type env, you'll get all the lists of environmental variables and you'll see the service being in there. That's the way to bind the containers together without hard coding IPs and stuff. They can already discover that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you can just you can just insist. I'm going to put this hat in the back. So if you don't want the USB stick, just throw it in here. But you're welcome to keep it if you want to try again later or something. Does anybody have some maybe, I know, got lost completely in this whole thing and want me to repeat some part of that? Those who didn't use Docker and Kubernetes can be overwhelming, I think, to put all these. Uh, it can't be in the menu. It has to be inside the container, right? Uh, sorry, yes. Still can't. You're correct. Okay. Uh, which you can get into the container as well, yeah.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know it's uh, quite a challenge to get through all that. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was also a challenge to put dev stack in six gigs. Yeah. Uh, we had to cut a lot of workers.